on a night with epic playoff implications. The Hicks come to town on the second night of a back-to-back -back and give the Knicks that work in the first, first quarter. But Julius and the gang clap back after being down as much as 16 to bring it to a one-point lead at the half. And then see Kane Ash, we had a dogfight on our hands going into the fourth quarter. As the game was going back and forth, Knicks found themselves in a three-point deficit. And who would come to bail us out and come to Julius's aid? But the Broadway Barrett, aka Nine God, RJ with seven clutch fourth quarter points and one assist. The French Prince with a clutch steal to seal it. And the Knicks would go ahead to finish off the Indiana Pacers, folks. Now tied for fourth in the East, 107 to 110. Knicks get the W. It started off really sloppy on both sides of the ball. Defensively, we were just not sticking to what we were good at. Offensively, the shots just weren't falling. They just weren't there. And again, I mean, the Pacers are not a team that they were in the beginning of the season where they were kind of all over the place. They've started to gel a little bit more. So it is um, not the same team that we've played. And the interesting thing about the Pacers is the two times that they have played the Knicks, they were able to hold Julius Randle to under 20 points. So he seems to have like this, you know, hard relationship with the paces where he gets into these he's these ruts and it's kind of hard to get out of it today he got out of it but it's all about the nine god my boy rj yes, barrett sir. listen he i don't know what was in his you know pre-game meal yeah. today but he found his three-point range today baby mm -hmm. they were falling for him and defensively he looked great i mean this was just the classic example of your defense will always be with you and you just got to keep at it you just got to keep making it harder for the other team to get shots yeah. up and right. regardless of your offense is there or not the key especially at home is just to stop the other team from hitting points defend home court at all costs necessary and that's what the knicks did the new york grits baby they fought back tonight you know, with the knicks they as you said they started off slow the defense wasn't there offense wasn't there at all and we found ourselves down 16 points but you mentioned the defense and you mentioned julius and even though if you look at the box score, you, you see 28 points, 10 dimes, 6 assists, 4 steals. It was Julius on the defensive end yeah. going one-on-one, -on -one, shot the fair one with Sabonis. He said, Sabonis, I'm the real all-star. You just got in on a technicality <laughs> and took it to him on the defensive end. Yeah. Took it to sure. Sabonis on the defensive end. Like I said, 4 steals, and that led to a lot of Knicks transition buckets, especially when they came back and, and cut it. Um, and brought it to a one-point lead. He had Derrick Rose with that three-pointer to close the half. And then, um, you know, it got ugly in the fourth. It, it definitely got ugly in the fourth. Yeah, D. Rose was just, it was like he forgot how to dribble, man. And and uh, McConnell was, was all over the place. Another Nick killer. And, uh, just, you know, happy to see R.J. bounce back with a, with a nice shooting night. Four for six for downtown. And when he came in, when it counted, six clutch Fourth yeah. quarter points. The Knicks were down 96-93 with four minutes and 38 seconds to go. RJ comes in, six clutch buckets, and a dime, a nice dime to Julius for a three, and, and that pretty much sealed it. You know, the free throws, yeah. it got ugly in the yeah. end, but we came away with it. Free throws or the missing thereof can really make or break the outcome of a game, but let's not forget that RJ Barrett is 20 years old, and I can name about five players off the top of my head who were terrible free throw shooters at 20 years old and now, you know, years in to their career in the NBA, their free throw percentage is all the way up. And let's not forget that RJ's free throw percentage was terrible last season and the, the you know, yeah, he what he's been able up. to do with that and how he's been able to step that up. So if stepped the trajectory up. of him and his free throws continues, he's going to keep getting better. Yeah. So let's and, give and, him a break. And I also like they had 11 turn forced turnovers tonight. You know, they're, they're not really opportunistic defense, CK. Typically, they only average about seven takeaways a game. Tonight, they were all over it, especially late when it mattered. Got 11 forced turnovers out there, and, and I thought they were very aggressive. So, great job on them on the defensive end, bro. I mean, since Derrick Rose has been in this starting lineup, where there are steals, there are supposed to be transition play. Yeah. And I feel like this team, we beforehand, we never really – took advantage of playing in transition and tonight Big was time. just like the uh, our last game too you know we took advantage of that and it was just so it was so nice to see you yeah. know what i'm saying so with the steals came the transition so uh definitely something we took advantage of tonight and we um 
we, we used it the way we should have been using it this entire season. I like to see that. Yeah. And they started to get back to, you know, their defensive strong points. You know, right. the Knicks in the month of February, which I thought was interesting, they lead the NBA in rebounds. Um, so their part of their defensive game is getting, you know, avoiding rather the other team getting those second, second third chance, chance opportunities mm -hmm. and getting the ball back in their possession. And in the first half, they kind of were not playing that game. Mm -hmm. They were playing more defense with their hands rather than their feet. In the second half, they kind of got back into the swing of things. And, you know, the proof is in the pudding and the proof is also in the score so yeah shout out to the Knicks shout out to Tib shout out to everybody involved for being able to go ahead and kind of make the adjustments and just get their head back in the game uh, you know listen only five points for Frank but he had the key the key clutch stop in the end um the three-pointer that he did shoot he shot it without hesitation you want to see that he was one for one from downtown you know again quiet on the stat sheet but ultimately you want to just see that confidence from Frank and he may have his opportunities here because as long as Peyton is out obviously Rose is going to be his starting lineup now Rose logged uh, 38 minutes tonight. Now they have a back-to-back -back against Detroit tomorrow, so you could see a lot more quickly in Frank out there and maybe a little less Rose as they try to minute, limit those minutes with with um, with Peyton out. But in overall, I thought Rose's play in the first half, I thought he was solid once again, man. I thought he did a good job of getting the offense in order. He finished with 11 dimes, five steals, so I thought, I thought he was great there. Turned the ball over a little bit too much in the fourth. You know, and that could have really swung the tides there. Four turnovers, and I think he had about three in the fourth. And he had a bad foul on McConnell near the end of the game. That yeah. that was ill-advised. So decision-making was still a little bit questionable. But overall, I thought it was a solid game for Rose. I thought him and Randall in the pick-and-roll and pick-and-pop pick situation, I thought that was there all night because Sabonis plays no defense whatsoever. So I, I thought don't. that was there for the Knicks to capitalize on, and they were able to do that, especially in the, that second half. Going to the bench, you know, quiet game for Obi. Uh, quiet game for Obi. Knox did come in. We lost Taj early. Lost Taj to an ankle injury early. It bears watching what we do there. Do we go to the G League and bring up a big? Um, Nerlens had a scary uh, uh, incident at the end of this game where Sabonis fell on his legs. You know, Nerlens is, is, ain't built like that either. So <laughs> that was kind of scary as, as you go into Detroit on a back-to-back. -back. But we did see Tibbs go small at one point. We did see Tibbs go small. I believe he had a lineup at one point with, uh, with D. Rose, R.J. Bullock, Kev and Randall at the five. I believe that was the lineup that we had in there for a little bit. Yeah. You'd like to see that more often if we get that chance, especially from an offensive standpoint to, to enhance that offense a little bit, CK. But um, we did lose Taj. Uh, Burks was okay. You know, quiet night compared to the Kings game. And then I thought IQ, IQ was in his bag a little bit. Ten points, three or four from downtown, had a four-point play for us. So decent play from the bench tonight. Oh, it's hard to call these these games at the 35th uh, game mark a, a must win, but when you look at the East and how jumbled up it is between four and like 13, all separated by three games, it's a big one. And, and the Knicks were able to move up to tied it fourth with the Raptors. I believe they're, they're fifth positionally because they did lose to the Raptors, so Raptors kind of own that tiebreaker. But these are the games when you look at that tough second half schedule, you look at gimme games against Detroit, you know, these two games that they're going to play them this week and then games against the Pacers who are within your, 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 you know, tier here, you got to win them. I want everybody in the chat and obviously the host to just, you don't have to close your eyes, but think back to when you were 20 years old I'll play. and if you can't find a memorable moment or a memorable thing you did when you were 20, just understand how stupid you were when you were 20. Or how many dumb decisions you made when you were 20. Yeah. Or just how yeah, just yeah. Big time. In, immemorable or nothing happened. It was just a phase in your life. That's why we bring up that RJ's only 20. And that's why people like me will call up and defend him when he misses a layup against the Heat. Or when he takes a bad angle or he gets too aggressive. Because he is aggressive. He is willing to make that mistake. He looks so bad at some times like terribly bad, mm -hmm. and I'm not going to hate on people or hating on them, but when you could see someone fighting through their mental toughness mm -hmm. at 20 years old, that's enough for me to say, all right, this guy's never going to be the greatest shooter. He's never going to be the quickest player. He's never going to have the best handle. But he, at 98, 93, we had Derrick Rose with Burks and Bullock. I don't yeah. think I've seen Burks and Bullock play too much this year together. But we had Burks and Bullock, and it was an interesting lineup because mm -hmm. we had spacing with shooters, and we had Randall. The problem was 
Rose didn't have it late in the game, and Randall was clearly tired. Yeah, yeah. So Tibbs puts RJ in. RJ hits a very clutch confidence three Mm -hmm. to make the lead 98-96. Aaron Holiday stinks and misses a layup. (laughs) (laughs) Then RJ drives to the bucket, gets the end one. Then the offense ran through RJ. Yeah. It wasn't running through Randall anymore. It ran back through RJ. RJ cuts through. They're expecting him to go to the lane. He kicks out to Randall. Randall's pumped up because he's like, nice pass. Mm-hmm. And then the offense continued to ran through it. And I'm actually happy that he missed those free throws. The same reason I'm happy he missed that layup against the Heat because it's another teachable moment where this guy at 20 is tough enough to say, um, I can't curse, but you saw what he yeah. said walking away from that free throw line. Yeah. So... This is a guy who's 20 years old, and we will continue to bring it up. Not that he's void of criticism, but it adds to his progression. I see people saying, you know, why should we be happy that he missed free throws? Look, nobody's saying that we're happy that he missed free throws. I'm, yeah. Like I said, and I'll continue to say, free throws are free. You're supposed to take those points. Those are free points, and they can make or break the outcome of a, of a game. But here's the thing. RJ is only beginning to show glimpses consistently of the player that he can be. His free throw percentage has drastically increased. I believe it's going to increase even more come next season and the season after that. We continually, as the call says, talk about his age because it just showcases that this is only the beginning. Mm -hmm. We're not talking about a player who's 28, 29 years old and kind of already in his habits and it's hard to break certain things for him. He's only beginning to formulate those habits. He's only beginning to formulate his strong suits as a player. Yeah. Every yeah. game isn't going to be pretty. Even the games that he plays great, there's going to be room for improvement. Even right. the games that he plays bad, there's going to be things that he did okay. There are going to be moments like, you know, it last a couple of weeks ago where he goes through these weird phases where it's like, where's RJ? He's missing. Someone mm-hmm. put up the missing, you know, wanted poster. And then he snaps out of it and he comes back into his own as a player. You're going to get this up and down roller coaster from him until he can be consistent. Tom loved to have to have a reason without him have to make a reason to make a decision. Mm-hmm. What I mean by that, I'm gonna tell you before y'all even before y'all even see it. Yo, that boy is being absent from that starting lineup from here on out until another reason is for him to get back in it. EP can be all he wants, but that's Tom Thibodeau's son, Jay Rose. That's his <laughs> man. Derrick Rose is his son. And if that man is jump-starting our offense and getting it, you know what I'm saying, where it's supposed to be and putting people in position and he can still penetrate and get to the basket and he can make shots, you know what I'm saying, doing everything he can't do and quickly can perform much better without him now that he don't learn and um, Bullock can do his thing and it's only two ball handlers in the second half and Nathan Frank is back in the offense, you know what I'm saying, playing defense, you know what I'm saying. He said Nathan Frank, he is running the wings left and right. <laughs> Only thing we missed in now is for Noel to go back to the second unit and miss to get back into the first, into yeah. the first five. And that's a solid 10 right there. I hate to say sometimes things happen that we don't want to happen, but that just happened. And that was a perfect reason, you know what I'm saying? A lot of people ain't been wanting that point in that lineup. So that's the perfect excuse, you know what I'm saying? Hold up, EP. Your spot is being solidified right now. <laughs> That's going to come down from the office, you know what I'm saying? Because Tom made that man come from Detroit. That was Tom Thibodeau's choice to have Derrick Rose come over yeah. here to New York. Big that team. wasn't an office move. That was Tom. But that was the office move that broke down the DSJ trade to, to them. And I shout out Westchester for that trade because the Knicks didn't make that trade, you know what I'm saying? But, yo, big up to the big man. Yeah, I call him Julius the Black Messiah. Yeah, Let's go. he's doing the yeah. thing. He let yeah. that boy know. Like you said, CP, yeah, you on the bench, man. Hold my jersey when Let's I go. check into this all-star you team. You just a submitter, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Uh, I'm the one that's on the team. Yeah. It's not tonight. Yeah. Matter of fact, I'm not even looking to score early in the game. Yeah. I'm going to let everybody do their thing. Facts. My thing is to go ahead and put that Spencer account on you. Shut you down from your game. What you had, 15, um, 7, and, and 5, something yeah. like that? Man, I'm going to drop this still 28 and a double with yeah. 7 on um, seven um, Light work. Assist, and let you know I'm an all-star man, you know yeah. what I'm saying? I don't have to be a scorer throughout the whole game. Just score when it means the most, you know what I'm saying? And I can go off and say the track, okay, my man RJ ready to get buckets. Yeah. I'm going to keep on playing D. 
stop crying to the oh. ref. I don't care nothing about your referee running out on the court. This our crib. Tonight was finally a night. You know what I'm saying? They let us play hard, boogie down ball, you know what I'm saying? And let the all stars go at it like they're supposed go. to go at it and wasn't making all the calls, especially not against us in our own building. This is real Nick life. This is real Nick life, you know what I'm saying? And shout out to everybody that been with it the whole time, you know what I'm saying? Let's you go. deserve to be where you at, you know what I'm saying? We the ones that, you know what I'm saying, put this hard earned work inside this, you know what I'm saying? Oh uh, yeah, man, we'll be back. Knicks versus Pistons. Let's get it going. Back-to-back -back wins. Can we do it? Or could we get three in a row? Three in a row. Put some respect.